Hello, I'm Kelly Firestone from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I'm here in Washington, D.C. visiting our favorite colleagues at Incura, and I thought I would share some common OIG findings. By the way, I am in with internal audit, so I am your friend, and I do have some background on some of the things we're going to discuss today. Common OIG findings include, and number one, salaries without backup documentation, salary certification without the backup documentation. If you look at most of your awards, 80 to 90 percent of your funding is your salary. So that having that documentation and the effort reporting and the certification of that documentation is important. It serves as your invoice. That's your only backup for what you're actually doing, what your faculty are charging, what the other um, times being charged to an award is. Other things to watch out for, equipment charged at the end of the period. You have to be able to demonstrate that the equipment was necessary and approved for the project as well as if you're buying something toward the end, can you demonstrate that it really did benefit the project it was charged to? A common thing to look out for, easy to find by the external and federal auditors. Salary charged for administrative employees. Also be careful watching for this unless it is a large program project, it's approved and well documented in the budget. You can't just charge anyone to an award, make sure it's documented. Again, documentation. A failure to support cost, um, cost sharing. Again, we're back to documentation. This is a word auditors use all the time. You need to have it well drawn out in your proposal and monitor it during your award. A final one is your failure to um, report program income. A lot of this is a failure to report it because people don't understand what it is. Make sure you work with your faculty that they know they need to report it and you work with your sponsored programs office to make sure it's being monitored and documented as well. Next up, salaries for scientists who did not work on the award. Again, you can't, you've got to be sure of this as part of your certification. Is the right people being in charge of the right award? Another easy thing to find, so make sure those are done correctly. Again, costs not adequately documented. If you're charging all sorts of supplies and equipment and salaries and you don't have the support to back that up, the external auditor could question, how does that benefit this program? How did you justify it being charged to this program as well? Cost of supplies, equipment, and animal charges incurred in connection with other unrelated projects. Again, this is similar to the one before, not adequately documented, or salaries charged the wrong award. If you're charging animals to one award, you may be working on several awards that have animals, but just make sure you either allocate it and document it correctly. Don't just use awards because they happen to have money here and another one has money here. It has to be allocated appropriately to the award. Submission of false information on annual progress reports. This is actually becoming more and more um, prevalent actual faculty are going to jail for this. So make sure your faculty and EPI are aware that this is a big deal. You can't Xerox copy your progress report from year after year. They should be documenting what, the, what they worked on in that project and supporting it accordingly. And then delinquent annual progress reports. Again, this is just the basics of the award. It's an easy one to find and some of the agencies, specifically NSF and NIH, I know in particular NSF, won't let you submit further proposals if these are delinquent. Even if you were the co-PI on another award, it can block everyone's further submission. So those are some common OIG findings to watch out for. And don't forget to work with your internal auditors. They can help you watch for these things. Thanks.